YouTube world, my name is Nicholas Montez, and you're watching my YouTube channel, The Teenage Movie Critic. And welcome back to my YouTube channel, everybody. And today we are doing another Deadpool Wolverine ranking. We already ranked the MCU films, we already ranked the X Men franchise, and now we are going to be ranking all 16 or 17 Sean Levy films. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because Sean Levy is actually the director of Deadpool Wolverine, and he's actually directed some pretty goddamn good films. So let's go ahead and get started ranking all 17 of Sean Levy's films. Now, I actually skated through 17 and 16 just because 17 I haven't seen because I can't find it anywhere, and I think I missed that one, but we're going to head on over to Address Unknown, which is number 16, the real last place of this list, and to cut it short, yeah, it's just kind of boring, not that memorable, let's move on. Drop that. So here by the dozen, I was not really the biggest fan of. I think it's kind of weird that parents want to have as many kids as they want, yet they try to balance so many things. And I, I don't really understand the whole concept of that. It's like, if you want to balance so many things, why would you want to have a dozen kids? That makes no sense. So it had some fun, but I, I couldn't really get into it as much. So this is where the list starts to get a little bit funner and Big Fat Liar was fun enough. I enjoyed it, it was funny, nothing else to say more. Same thing with Big Fat Liar, it's okay, nothing complex, nothing new, just the same. interested in watching the pink panther since he directed it and honestly this just kind of feels like a weird movie because we're getting human actors most of the time but i don't know it was okay to me i wish we had more of the pink panther jet jackson was like an old disney superhero film like on disney channel or something I thought it was fun, nothing too crazy, pretty generic, but I thought it was actually pretty good. And with this, this is where I leave you. Okay, film, thought good performances. A fun little internship movie with Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn. Pretty good. Date Night is a fun film with, uh... uh for, I am so sorry. Uh... I forgot Steve Carell. Yes, yeah, fun movie with Steve Carell. Get it. Real Steel, I think, is a pretty fun, good time. Pretty weird concept, but it's actually pretty good. So this movie actually came out of nowhere on uh, Netflix a couple years back in like 2022 and I actually thought the Adam Project was pretty good. It's not like the best film or anything, but there was like interesting parts of it, of like time travel and all this stuff and it, it felt cool to me. So I actually really liked the Adam Project and the way it kind of told a, a good story too. And the original Night at the Museum is actually really good. It's kind of crazy because I never imagined the person that directed Deadpool Wolverine to direct some of the most heartwarming movies that I've ever seen. And Night at the Museum, it's really harmless, but that's what makes it so good. Is that it feels like this classic kids movie about museum statues coming to life. And it's so good with amazing performances. You get Robin Williams playing 
Theodore, a statue of Theodore Roosevelt. We get O. Wilson playing one of these little miniature cowboys and stuff like that. You, of course, get a slapping monkey. It's funny. You also get a Dick Van Dyke in here. It's just fun. And that's the thing I love about this film. It's just so much fun. Though I actually, I think the sequels might do it better than this one. But now we have the newly released Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, Sean Levy's newest film that just got released. And I thought it was actually a pretty great film. Um, obviously it lacks in a good story, but the thing that you wanted to come for this movie are cameos, multiverse, lots of gore and violence and, and crass humor and seeing Deadpool and Wolverine bicker back and forth, but also team up. And that's exactly what we got. When it comes to the cameos with Blade, Elektra, Gambit, and X-23, it works. When it comes to all the other characters, it works. I do wish we could have seen more of the original characters from the first two Deadpool films, but it still works. Um, I'm still debating on whether I like this one or the first one more. I'm still debating it. I think I might change it later. I'm not sure, but yeah, Deadpool Wolverine, a great movie. Night the Museum 3, I think that this is... Part of what makes this movie so interesting is... It's so fun in that the first, in that like, what I really love about it is I love how just it upped the state, it upped all the action to where you get like, just where like, it's in the same museum, but you have these people that are, you know, becoming statue-like creatures, but it also does like fight scenes and Escher drawings. And I'm like, this is some of the most creative fights I've ever seen. This movie is just so much fun. And I, I can't wait, wait to rewatch it. I, I just, I love this one. It's so good. Night of the Museum 2 was just a blast to watch. It did everything that the first film did, it did does better. Now, you're not exactly in the New York Museum, but you are upping the stakes where you're going to a different museum in Washington, D.C. And what's so fun is while you get more big or awesome, fun uh, cameos with, with all these people, as well as bringing in new types of different statues that are coming to life, you also get like just great sequences like Ben Stiller interacting with Jonah Hill as and you have Jonah Hill as a security guard and he's like acting like the flashlight is like a gun and when I ever since I saw that I was like this is just so funny and he's like and then the batteries fall out I'm like this is insane this is comedy at its best top tier film just top tier Drop that. Now we have Free Guy, which is my favorite Sean Levy film, and I thought about it for a while because, you know, Sean, you know, Free Guy, when I first saw it, I was like, this is all right. I don't, I, I never really understood the hype, but then I rewatched it in school last year, and I was thinking like, huh, this, this is actually very good. Like, it actually kind of makes sense in the light of the story. While it has the cameo bits, it has fun action, but it also has a pretty good story about an NPC character. Where Ryan Reynolds is playing a NPC in a video game, and why he doesn't have purpose, and why he's redoing the same thing every day. And that's so clever. Like, yet it's funny, yet it has heart, and it's got some laughs, and it's like, it, it's, it's, it, it fits for what the, what, what the movie's trying to tell. Uh, I believe it's turning three years old next month. I'm excited to rewatch re it and review it with you guys. So, yeah, that's my thought. That's my ranking of all, of all 16, 17 Sean Levy films. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.